Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from The Technology Firm. Today I'm gonna to walk you through how I used a WAN emulator to validate bandwidth requirements. So this is a little bit uh, different than some of my videos because I many times I use free, open source, shareware, freeware, that sort of thing. Uh, this is an actual commercial product. It's by a company called Apposite. I will put the link in the comments. I do not sell the product. Please don't ask me for pricing. Uh, I'm just a user of the tool, much like anybody else would be. So here's the what and why. So I got a, a call from a client who wanted to locate a backup server offsite and he was trying to figure out how much bandwidth the application requires. He was told by the vendor that a 100 meg link would be fine. So after calling several carriers, we found that uh, some can't provide the 100 meg link at the recovery location. And the ones that can provide a 100 meg link want an absurd amount of money. I'm sure many of you have been there before. Then I asked the client what bandwidth he would like to emulate because we have an emulator we can play with and he replied 100 meg and 10 meg so we wanted to find out how well it actually did work at 100 meg and how well the application worked at 10 meg i added that we should also use the current one gig connection as a reference point and baseline so i suggested we start with the 10 meg um, and that way it's kind of the worst case slowest scenario so we can visually see if there's any issues and then we had a discussion to determine the best approach and the impact to the application. We don't want to break things, right? Good news, this is a lab. So we had a lot of flexibility that you normally don't have. So don't do this with a production network. Do this with a lab network. So the plan was to dis disconnect the standby server. That's this guy over here, the slave. And then we force all the server to the master. The master had two ethernet ports, a primary and secondary as well. So we wanted to get rid of the slave, just unplug the ethernet connections, unplug the secondary ethernet connection on the master, so we know that all the data goes through this primary link. Then we can configure our WAN emulator. This is the Apposite Link Tropy Mini G, and it's 10, 100, and gig. And you can configure your bandwidth, your delay, and your packet loss. And these three variables will impact the speed, performance, or whatever you're trying to do. It's important you figure out how to set these values. A very simple example would be to do a ping with a specific packet size, and that will give you some of these uh, delay values, okay? So for most of my labs, this Mini G fits the bill, but there are many other models that you can actually look at. The dual placement, so the plan is to disconnect the standby server. We're going to force all the traffic like you saw a moment ago. And then we put this opposite WAN emulator in line with the primary connection. We leave all this stuff off for a bit. Uh, then we had the client just do his regular everyday work on the master, knowing the slave is not in the picture and the secondary link is not operating. And he said everything was pretty cool, right? And then we notice there's a database synchronization that happens between the two servers. This is all in the article that you can read, right? I'm just giving you the highlights. And we thought, ooh, let's look at that synchronization process and measure how long that takes uh, because the user experience wasn't any different at gig or 10 meg, which was kind of nice. So here's the actual results. So the results require a little bit of interpretation. Uh, the client interview was key in understanding the reporting conclusion because at first glance, uh, 10 meg down here looks like it's a killer. 20 minutes versus one minute. And you're like, oh, you know, that's terrible. Well, that only happens when there's synchronization. Synchronization only occurs when the servers lose connectivity. That normally doesn't happen, right? So this, this 20 minute value is only, I'm going to say, worst case scenario if something breaks or disconnects. Uh, the other question was, how often do these two servers talk to each other to determine the link is down? And the heartbeat goes out every 90 seconds. So one thing with heartbeats is you want to find out how often they come out, and then you want to find out the threshold at which the actual heartbeat is considered lost. And this is every 90 seconds. Uh, in this specific example, it was only two. So two times 90 is 180 seconds. So if the link's down for more than 180 seconds, then guess what? It thinks the other link, the other server is down, and blah, 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 blah. Regular usage, you have your regular database updates. That's only 2.5 megabytes. And that only happens when it's required. So it may happen once every minute, once every second. It, it all depends on, on the usage, right? But there was no performance degradation when we were set for 10 meg at all. So this is the important part. 
um, your everyday usage, right? The everyday usage was not impacted at 10 meg. Now the synchronization took longer, but the client said this is not a deal breaker because you can still use the application during the synchronization process and there was no real performance hit. We didn't even know it was synchronizing while it was going on. So there you go. That's how you use a WAN emulator to figure out your bandwidth requirements. Have a good day. Bye for now.